Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be kind of an overview of some art terms, specifically terms related to color and how I use them on this channel. And that's something that I've gotten a decent amount of questions about over the past few months and hadn't wanted to make a video about it because I feel like uh, there are tons of videos already out there about this subject, but I figured I get the question often enough, so I will just go ahead and make a video. Now before I jump in, uh, I feel like I always have some kind of a disclaimer, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, related to this subject that uh, color and terms defining certain characteristics of color can be subjective and uh, particularly they can be individually related to specific types of uh, visual art. So for example, these terms or slightly different versions of these terms uh, might be might mean different things or be applicable to um, cinematography or film and then others might be applicable to photography and still others to digital art or traditional art and painting. Um, and I guess even to like uh, commercial uh, house painting or industrial painting rather. So uh, just to keep it kind of more manageable and so this video isn't super long, we're gonna stick to just the area that I work in, which is traditional art. So, um, and the terms that we're gonna be talking about are hue, saturation, and value. So we're just gonna be talking about those related to, um, to traditional art and specifically uh, I'll be kind of defining how I understand those terms and what I mean by them when I use them in videos on this channel. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the first term, which is hue. Now hue you can basically think of as just almost interchangeable with the word color. So um, hue is your perception, the, the characteristic of a color that determines whether you see, like whether it's green or red or blue, and that is independent of the color's saturation or value, and we're gonna uh, define both of those terms later on, so just hold tight. Now there is a aspect of hue or a characteristic of hue um, that is really particularly helpful for um, traditional artists to understand, which is the hue's warmth or coolness. And uh, so you can see here is some yellow, and this is a really warm yellow, and this is a really cool yellow. And you can see there's definitely a difference between them. And again, I should say that warmth and coolness can sometimes be perceived differently by different people. So if you disagree with me and you think, no, that one's warm, no, that one's cool, that's not uncommon, that does happen. Although I would say less often with yellow, one of the more difficult ones to get warmth and coolness to agree on. Um, among different people are, are in hues of blue. But uh, the reason why it's so helpful to understand um, for traditional artists is because uh, a lot of the, one of the kind of ways that you can use in your toolkit to draw attention to certain areas in your painting or to make other areas sink back is to uh, intentionally, strategically use warm and cool colors. So. Um, warm colors tend to kind of rise to the top of painting and really pop out at you while as cool colors tend to sink back a little bit more. So it's pretty common, you'll see a lot of artists will use technique where they do warmer colors in the light areas or the highlights of their painting and cooler colors in the shadows to kind of try to push them back a little bit. And that's not a hard and fast rule. Some artists will actually intentionally turn that on its head and do the cool colors on the lighter areas and the warm colors in the darker areas or they'll like kind of layer um, right next to each other warm and cool colors to create a sense of a sense of vibration and kind of liveliness in the painting um, but regardless of how you decide to use them um, it's good to understand and be able to perceive the difference between um, the warm and cool hues so the second characteristic that we're going to talk about is saturation and saturation is basically the purity or intensity of a color. So, uh, and again, independent of what that color is, the hue and the uh, color's value. So saturation can be thought of as intensity. So more saturated equals more color, less saturated equals less color. 
Now, saturated colors, similar to warm colors, tend to kind of rise to the top in an image and they tend to really kind of pop out and call attention to themselves, whereas less saturated colors can kind of sink back and maybe be a little bit quieter. And it's good to know, again, just like with the warmth and the cool, it's good to know what you're doing and to recognize saturation just because you can, it's so powerful and you can use it in lots of different ways depending on your style and the type of work that you're wanting to create and the type of feeling you're wanting to evoke. But I would say particularly if you're aiming for some element of realism in your work, it's especially important to use saturation um, sparingly, judiciously, just because uh, if you're looking around, uh, just at the world around you, you'll realize that uh, in terms of naturally occurring things, saturation is actually um, pretty rare. And you know, you might see something like a green tree that looks so bright and vivid, but if you really are kind of carefully comparing it to other colors and really looking at it carefully, you'll realize it's not, it's not pure green, it's not purely saturated, there's lots of other colors in there. So um, yeah, if you're aiming for realism, that's good to be aware of and to kind of use it carefully. And I would say that's one of the more common mistakes that I see people who are, who are wanting their work to look realistic. Um, they, that's one of the more common mistakes I see them make is that they use too, satura too much saturated color for things that actually are much less saturated in real life. Um, and even for painters who are maybe not aiming for realism or who are kind of purposely trying to bend reality and using a lot of color, you'll notice that much of the time they do still kind of balance saturated and unsaturated just because the eye can kind of rest in those areas that are less saturated more, so you can kind of create a sense of movement throughout your piece between the unsaturated areas and the more saturated areas. And uh, there are painters um, and paintings that are made of like purely saturated color, but that is actually a really hard thing to do well. So um, it's, it's uh, trickier than you would think to make a cohesive, interesting painting that uh, that's made with completely saturated color. Now depending on the type of media you're using, whether you're using um, paint or acrylic or oil or colored pencils, um, pastel, whatever, depending on the media you're using and the individual color that you're using, some colors will come out of the tube or the stick or the pencil, what have you. Uh, more saturated than other colors and that's because especially with um, like with colored pencils for example a lot of the pencils that you use have already kind of been desaturated so if you're working with um, with paint uh, it's more common to have um, a pure color that's not a mix and that will be really saturated um, but it's just good to be aware that just because you haven't mixed it with anything else yet doesn't mean that that color is saturated so again, saturation is the purity and intensity of a color. And if you're wanting to increase the saturation in an area in your piece, really the only way to do that is to add more saturated color. Now you'd have other options if you were working digitally, but that's not what this video is about. So um, in a traditional piece, if you're wanting to increase saturation, you just have to add more saturated color. Now you can decrease the saturation of a color in a couple different ways. And one that's really common and that you see um, a lot of um, beginning artists do, or probably you even did it when you were a kid, is to just add black to the color to darken it um, and to take some of the intensity out. And uh, that does work, but it has some challenges with it, which is that it can tend to kind of create a muddy sense in the color and maybe even have it look like a little bit chalky and dead. And the method that a lot of artists use that I was taught in school and the method that I still use today is to just add um, complementary colors. So if you have a really saturated red area and you want to desaturate a bit, rather than adding black, I would add green. And um, that works all across the color wheel. And just a little aside, if, uh, if you're not sure what a complementary color is, if you take a color wheel and pick, say, yellow, the color that's directly across from that purple is the complementary color. So that's a really good guide for figuring out how to desaturate your color in a way that still keeps it lively and vibrating and interesting looking.
Now, um, one other little note here, you can add white to lighten the color, but it doesn't actually decrease the saturation on its own. So for example, you can see this is a painting that is very light and really kind of bright and you can see that it's made mostly, pa mostly pastel colors but it uh, is still actually pretty saturated. And that becomes really obvious when you compare it to this painting, which is about the same level of lightness, but is much less intense and saturated. So um, just a good thing to remember, again, when you're working with color, that adding, light, adding white will lighten the color, but um, it will still have a lot of intensity with it unless you uh, mix in some other color. Now the third term and the last term is going to be value. And value uh, is really simple. Again, you can just think of it as the lightness or the darkness of a color. So um, think of it like a gradient almost where the darker is on one end and the lighter is on the other and there's this whole um, value change in between. So one thing that kind of, can be kind of interesting and fun to do is to take a photograph or um, a painting, either of yours or somebody else's, and just to um, study and understand the value in it. You can, on your computer, just completely desaturate it and turn it into a black and white photograph. And what that does is it keeps you from seeing the hue, so you can't see any reds, blues, greens, yellows, and you can't see any saturation. You have no idea which are the more intense areas of color. All you see is the lightness and darkness in, uh, in the photograph. And that can be really helpful because lightness and darkness in a subject often indicate the form of the subject. So they indicate um, the shape that it has, the dimension that it has, where the light is hitting it. And uh, understanding value, even though this is the third term that I put on here, in some ways it should be the first term that you try to really understand if you're getting started in, um, in art and you're wanting to be able to draw, especially realistically, but really for anybody, uh, understanding light and dark is so crucial. So um, another way that you can kind of do these value studies without having to just take a photo and then desaturate it on your computer is to learn to see value with your eyes. And I feel like I have talked about this in another video, but I can't remember for sure, or maybe I wrote about it on Tumblr or something, but it's a really simple trick, something that I learned in art school. Um, and it's super simple. It is just to squint your eyes like as much as you possibly can and look at your subject, whether it's a photo or a real life, and you're letting in just the least amount of light as possible that you can while still seeing something. And what this is going to do is it's going to blur out all of the detail and actually going to blur out some of the, the color as well, and you're going to be able to get a better sense of where the really dark areas are and the really light areas are in your subject. So um, you have your subject, squint your eyes, and the first thing you wanna look for are where are the darkest dark areas and where are the lightest light areas. And if you're doing a sketch, kind of get those clear in the sketch. And the thing that can be trickier to do, but that you can definitely learn to do with practice is to differentiate the kind of subtle values um, in the in-between areas, so the medium areas learning to see, okay, this is a medium dark value or this is a medium light value. And that can take some time and practice, but definitely is so crucial to, to understanding value and using it well in your work. So now, even though I've defined each of these terms kind of individually and separately from one another, you never really use one thing all on its own. I mean, unless you're doing like a, a pencil sketch or a black and white piece in which case value is the end all be all. But most of the time if you're working with color, you are constantly evaluating and discerning and trying to put into place all three of these things at once. So how the hue relates to the saturation, relates to the value, and using all three of those things along with the you know awareness of warmth and cool will really help you to uh, become more powerful in your use of color. And um, I think I've also mentioned this before too in different videos, but I don't feel like I naturally had a great sense of color. I've definitely gotten better at it over the years, but it's something that was hard for me. Um, just kind of drawing and composition and proportions were much more where my strength was naturally. So um, I've had to work really hard to be able to see color and differentiate 
and um, and use saturation judiciously, etc. So uh, it can be done, um, but it's a process of kind of being aware of all three of those things at once in your work and um, practicing seeing and putting it into action. So um, I don't remember who said this first or even if it was one person, but um, to me a huge aspect of getting better at um, at least creating realistic art and maybe creating any art in general is learning to see. So, you know, your brain may be thinking, like we mentioned the tree example earlier, oh, a tree, it's green. Um, and whether you realize it or not, that knowledge is deeply ingrained and kind of stuck in your brain because you have thought that since childhood and the brain can kind of tend to flatten and simplify things in order to make them easier to remember. So you're thinking a cow is black and white, a tree is green, an apple is red, but in reality uh, there is so much more nuance and depth and complexity to everything that's around us. So learning to see the hue, the saturation, the value in all the colors and things that are around you um, learn to actually see for what's really there uh, is going to be uh, huge in, um, in helping you create more uh, powerful art, whether you want to do it realistically or not. So um, I think that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And um, and yeah, if you, as always, if you have any ideas or questions or thoughts for future videos that you'd like to see, leave them in the comments below. I do read through all of those. And um, this video came from a suggestion from a viewer as well. So um, please be sure to do that. And I think, yes, that's it. And thank you very much for watching as usual. And I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you in the next video. Bye.